episode number nine of Musical Stories. It's a humorous look at a life in music, and I hope you get a kick out of some of these stories, and I hope it inspires you if you're a struggling musician. And here we go. So in episode nine, we're going to tell the story of how Dad cut the strings. All right, so here it is about, I don't know, 1984 or so. I'm probably about nine years old. And um, I'd gotten a guitar, or my brother had gotten a guitar. And um, it was our, you know, our first electric guitar. We bought it together. And um, my brother gave up after a little while, so the guitar ended up falling into my hands and lived in my bedroom, and so I played it. <clears throat> And you know, the strings got rusty after a year or so. Probably never changed the strings on it for the first two years, you know. And so a couple years went by and then there was time to have to get new strings because one of the strings broke. And um, I had a friend that played guitar and you know, he let me borrow one of his old rusty strings and we tied a knot in it and put it on the guitar and it lasted for a few more days but then that one broke too and so we had to go buy new strings because I couldn't play because this guitar was missing a string and so I asked my dad if we could go um, buy a set of strings okay now we lived way out in the country we lived in the middle of a cornfield okay it was way out there in other words, if you were to stand in my front yard and turn around and do a 360 and look in all the directions all around you, you couldn't see another house on the horizon for as far as you could see in any direction. And so we were way out. So it took about, you know, a 40, 45 minute drive into town to go to the music store where we could buy some strings. This was before, you know, you could mail order stuff and have it delivered, right? It was about, I don't know, 86 or so. And so, um, for my birthday that year, I had received a gift certificate to the local guitar shop. It was called Guitars something, I don't know, Guitars and Stuff, I think it was the name of it. And so I got a $5 gift certificate. Okay, well that's enough to buy strings. Strings were, I think, $3.99 for a set, so it was more than enough to buy a set of strings. And so I bugged my dad. Hey, I got this gift certificate to the music store. I need new strings. Let's go buy new strings. And my dad, you know, grumbled for a while and said he was busy and you know, a couple days went by, and so I just kept bugging him. And so eventually, we got to a Saturday where there wasn't much going on, and he finally agreed to drive me to town to go buy the strings, okay? And so I get my gift certificate, and um, we drive all the way there in silence, of course. Radio not on, right? Like, my dad didn't listen to music. He didn't like music, and so... Music irritated him, and so it was just silence. And so we get to the music store, and I said, I'd like one set of strings, please. And the guy said, $3.99 plus tax. Pulled out my gift certificate. And he said, you know, we don't honor those here. And my dad said, the heck you don't. <laughs> uh, he was kind of a big, intimidating person. But anyways, the guy behind the counter said, look, I just bought this music store and all of its inventory and I did not write this gift certificate. That's not my signature. This is a completely different store. And I looked at it and I was like, well, it says guitars and stuff and has the logo on the gift certificate. And there's your sign with the same logo. It says guitars and stuff. And you're wearing a guitars and stuff t-shirt. So this isn't the same store? Nope. I didn't sell you that gift certificate. And my dad said, you're going to honor this gift certificate. And the guy was like, uh, um, he kind of perked his head up and looked over into the corner. And he said, hey, what should I do? And there was a guy in the corner of the room on the other side of the music store. He was sitting there strumming a guitar, you know. 
and we just thought he was another customer. And the guy put the guitar down and came over and he's like, well, you know, so it turns out this was the former owner of the music store. <laughs> the guy that had sold the store, he just happened to be in the store strumming a guitar. I don't know why. But anyway, they had a conversation. They were like, hey, you didn't tell me that there were outstanding gift certificates when I bought this store. How many outstanding gift certificates are there that I... I mean, if I have to honor them all, I'm going to lose a lot of money. How many are there? You know, don't you have a record? No, I never wrote any of them down. Okay, so he was still leaning towards not honoring it, and my dad just insisted, you know. He's like, you're going to take this gift certificate. You bought the store. You bought all the outstanding gift certificates. You should have asked when you bought the music store if there were any outstanding gift certificates and how many there were, and you should have planned for that. And so the guy reluctantly said, okay, I'm going to honor this gift certificate, you know. Um, and my dad said, and my dad turned to the other guy and he said, you know, you're selling your gift certificates and you didn't put an expiration date on it. So, you know, you might want to rethink your business. So anyway, the story goes, so they gave me the set of strings. And then I said, well, I'll take two, sir. And I pulled out another five bucks so that I could buy myself a second set. Because you know you always need an extra set because you might break a string. And so you want to have that extra. And uh, my dad was like, nope, we came here to buy one set of strings. We're not spending any money. You got a gift certificate. Spend that. Don't spend your money. Save it. Don't buy more strings. And I was like, well, what if I break a string? Then what do I do? I have to drive all the way back. So if I have two sets, I'll have spare. My dad just, he would not allow me to buy a second set of strings. He just forbid it, right? And so I wanted to buy that second set of strings. And you know, I was familiar enough, like I had changed the guitar strings on my friend's guitar. And my friend had come over even with, like I mentioned before, he had like used strings. And so we had actually changed some strings on my guitar and put on previously used strings. So I was pretty familiar with how the guitar worked and how you string them through the back and they come out through the bridge and they go across. And so anyway, I knew I was going to need two sets. But my dad wouldn't let me buy it, so I just had the one set. We drove all the way home, in silence, of course. No radio. <laughs> and no conversation. But anyway, so we got home, and I was like, great, thanks for giving me a ride, Dad. I'm going to go change my strings. He's like, let me do it. You can watch. And I thought to myself, oh, no. But I couldn't contradict or, you know, tell him that he was wrong. I just had to say, yes, sir. <laughs> and so here's my dad with a musical instrument, okay? And he takes the set of strings, unpacks them, okay? Holds them up, and he goes, well, looks like your strings got to be all about this long. Clip, and he cuts all six strings. All right, now we're ready to put them on. And I was like, Dad, did you account for the extra space of feeding it through the bridge from the back? And also, you know, not all the strings go on the closest tuner. Some of the strings go on the next tuner and the next one. So were you measuring just from the first tuner? What about the strings that go to the furthest tuner? And so we took the first string put it through the back of the bridge, and it didn't reach the tuner. In fact, none of the strings were long enough to reach the tuners because they were all too short. And I said, well, you know, maybe next time we would put the strings on and tune the guitar. And then if there's an extra little bit of string hanging out, we'll just cut it when we're done. He was like, oh, oh. And then I said, well, looks like we're getting in the truck and driving back to the music store to buy that second set of strings because I have zero strings. They're all too short. We just have to throw them away. 
it's time to go buy another set of strings. So we went all the way back to the music store, bought a second set of strings. I came back home, I put the strings on, then we clipped them. The end. Okay, so I'm not sure exactly, you know, what the moral of the story is other than always put your strings on first and then clip the ends after you've tuned it up and stuff. Because, you know, they might slip a little bit and so you want to tune it and then clip your strings. But anyway, always have an extra set of strings handy. So I guess another moral of the story is don't let people mess around with your instrument. You know, your instrument's kind of a sacred thing. Take care of it and don't just hand it to someone and hope they know how to handle it. Sometimes if I'm at a show or at home and someone asks to play my guitar, I'll just let them play one of my cheaper guitars, but I don't let people handle my expensive instruments. Um, I guess one of the other morals of the story is don't let people handle your instruments if they're not musicians, you know. I, I don't let people play my expensive instruments or, or let them borrow them or, or let them even hold it. Uh, I might hand them one of my cheaper instruments if they want to goof around on it, but um, my expensive instruments that I have, I just don't let people touch them or I don't let people carry them at gigs. If I have someone that comes up to me and says, hey man, great show, can I carry your guitar for you? No. Nope, you can carry this mic stand, you can carry a guitar stand, you can carry a music stand, you can carry uh, you know, an amp, but you can't carry my guitar. Sorry, I'm going to carry it. And so I just don't let people handle my music instruments and um, I'm pretty careful with who I hand them to. And anyways, so hope you enjoyed that story and I'll see you in the next episode.